Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we have they, gadgets. We have um, toys on the uh, set here today. It's uh, coming up is the Albuquerque Maker Fair. And uh, with us today are a couple of organizers with the Maker Fair. And you'll find out what a Maker Fair is here in just a second. Wendy Flybutter is joining us today. Hi, Wendy. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. You are the Maker Fair organizer. Um, and uh, Craig Goldsmith is here, volunteer organizer uh, with Maker Fair New Mexico. There, hey, Craig, how are you? you? You're the guy with the box of toys here. Yeah, I brought a few things that'll give some ideas about what people might see when they come to the Maker Fair. We have a little video that might explain it pretty well. It, oh, we don't have that? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Director Dan. So what is a Maker Fair then? A Maker Fair is a fair that showcases um, do-it-yourselfers. So there's a lot of people in the area that are doing things in their garage, on their kitchen table, and it's a place to showcase it. Um, it's one of those things that you don't normally find is kind of hidden from the community. And it stems from um, probably about a little more than 10 years ago, kind of a grassroots movement of people that, you know, went to crafts, to tech enthusiasts, and where they kind of come together and they began to share. And from there grew a maker's movement that's happened all over the country. So the Maker's Fair is a place and an outlet for that community to grow and people to share. It sounds like fun. Too. It's a lot of fun. It makes you want to go pick up a, some kind of skill, some kind of hard yeah. skill, you know, whether it's soldering or welding or sewing. Yes, and you can. And a lot of the booths are hands-on. And soldering is one of the things that, one of the booths that we actually put together, teach. And, you know, you can make a pin like this and learn to solder um, the pieces together. And we have sewing machines. People can go and they can sew and close. And there's just all kinds of activities. It's very hands-on. Now, Craig, you, you do stuff with... Uh, I'm a maker. Uh, um, uh, uh, electronics, LEDs and things. Uh, electronics. Um, I also do things like this. Yeah, feel free to show which us is, what you have. If you look at this, this is actually a restaurant and laundromat that's in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that place. <laughs> yes. Do you know it? Yes, do you know sir. the village? It's not village subs anymore, but that's a separate issue. The reason I'm showing this is it looks fancy, but actually what I did was I just went out with my camera and took digital photographs of the building from every side, pretty much, <laughs> put them on the computer, printed them out, wrapped it around cardboard, and now I've got a little building. And one of the things that's really big about uh, the Maker Faire ethos is inspiring people to be able to do this kind of work and you not just whole see town. what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. One of our big things is participation and inspiration, not just being a spectator. And this is something relatively simple. It just seems fancy. Yeah. The same token, there's something like this. People think everything has to be highly engineered. This is just rubber bands on a wooden board. What, what is that it used do? for? Well, it's not used for anything. Or I actually was experimenting because these are what are called cold cathode fluorescent tubes mm -hmm. that you can get in about 10 different colors. They're about a dollar a piece. How fun. Yeah. The only thing is you can't use <clears throat> a regular power supply. You have to use these little inverters. And this was just my way of testing it out, but it's already kind of a cool thing. My daughter likes it, puts it above okay. her bed. But if you look at it, there's nothing fancy here, nothing that yeah. a 10-year-old couldn't do, a little terminal strip from Radio Shack, some batteries, rubber bands. Lights up nicely. But then you can get more advanced. Here's a little drone. I love this. And the only thing that's unique about this particular drone, this is a, an item that you can buy for about $150. This would be considered a mid-sized quadcopter. Uh -huh. But what I did was painted it, put on my own LEDs, front and back. Uh -huh. So it's been heavily modified. Nice. And that's a big part of the maker ethos. It's a punk you, rock drone. It's, it's, we actually call it the punk rock Air Force. Nice. Um, <laughs> but part of the point there is if you've ever known somebody where they buy something new and the first thing they do is take it apart mm -hmm. and change it, that's a maker. If you had an uncle that did that with yeah. musical equipment, would be a perfect example. You call it tinkering. Or mm -hmm. it, yeah. that's exactly yeah. right. It's, this is, it's tinkering. So then to get a little more advanced. This is something that's not modified. This is something that I made from scratch. And I don't know if that shows up on the television there very well. Oh, the Slightly. It's hard to see if those LEDs are going under the bright yeah, light. We have so much light on the set here. But this is something that was created from scratch. And for me, one of the big things about being a maker is process 
and technique can be really important. So I think for a lot of makers where an artist may say, I want to create a painting that has a certain emotional connotation, that's their end goal. An engineer may have a very particular solution he needs to accomplish. For the maker, I think some of it is very process oriented. So for me, what, what, what I wanted to do with this particular piece was if you look at these LEDs, which are like little electronic light bulbs, right. I wanted to create a structure where there's no parts besides the LEDs themselves. Yeah. If you look, it's actually just all the little leads of the LEDs put together in a grid that is the wiring and the structure. And for me, that was kind of a, almost an intellectual challenge. And then wrap it up in a little box. And the kind of cool thing about this is you can actually jack a laptop into it. It's got a little program in it. And you can download your I program to change your lighting display. Oh, and wow. I think another big thing about the maker ethos is what we call upcycling. So if you look at this, this yeah. is a CD right. spindle, oh, yeah. which I turned into a robot. I, that I have, you know, the CDs are going the way of the dinosaur, but right. I still have hundreds of these around my office. And so this was a little robot that I built, my own circuit board, some look motors that. that I bought. And uh, I'm not going to drive it around right now, but this is sort of also but, what is a big part of the maker ethos is upcycling. Yeah, take something that... And yeah, and CD spindle cases are a good example. Uh, a big thing for a lot of makers these days is using an Altoids tin. An Altoids tin is that perfect size to hold a couple of batteries and a small circuit board. But it's a nice metal case ready to go. You can buy them for $2 and you get the we have Altoids. One right on our table over there. Yeah, people, <laughs> people turn them into small computers. They turn them into um, USB chargers, solar chargers. It's all these kind of things that you will see at the Maker Fair, but that also we like to teach. You know, we were talking about being able to solder. So soldering is a basic skill. If you can't solder, there's a lot of things you can do without soldering, but if you can solder, it opens up a whole world, even if you're doing well, simple this work. Is but it's something that you can you can learn. Absolutely. Yeah. We teach, we teach I, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of people at every fair. Um, we also teach skills like sewing. Um, back in the day, I think a lot of people learned how to sew from their mothers, from their grandmothers. Those, these skills at home or in the shop are kind of being lost in the modern era. And so we're trying to bring back those skills so that people can make their own whether it's clothing, whether it's objects like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, in fact, Wendy and I on the way down here, we're talking about if we can try to work out a welding class so people that want to learn to do a basic weld can come and do that, as well as get inspired by all the cool things that they'll see people creating. Now, we're a little ahead of it, but uh, there's, the Maker Fair is coming up in September, right? September 13th and 14th, yeah, yeah at the um, Balloon Museum. From 10 to 6. And there's a whole bunch <laughs> yeah. well, There's a whole bunch of Craig Goldsmiths there, right? There is. There's a bunch and groups of people. But so there's looking. individuals, yeah. there's groups, there's older people, it's there's incredible. younger people, there's people of all sorts. Is this sort of a call to any other burgeoning makers or any other makers out there in the community, or are you pretty full? It's Oh, no. We're still looking for makers. We will always take more makers. Um, we had a really good turnout last year. I think we're going to have a great turnout this year, and it's very exciting. <laughs> I think and the single biggest um, skill that I would love to have is to make my own clothes. Yes. We spend so much money on t-shirts and pajamas mm -hmm. and things that we, we should just be able to sew. And we used to, my grandmother used to be, be able to make all of our, you know. Right. And it's just, it, that is something that I think would be an incredible. We do. We do have that, um, the sewing machines and we have some fabric and we even have some clothing there so you can be like, hey, I want the sleeves of this on this shirt and just swap them around. Now, put those you just together. go for it. What's your specialty, Wendy? What, you're a maker, obviously. What do you do? Oh, I make all kinds of things. Um, I haven't ever, there's no one thing, but I've done everything from sewing bras. I make my own skincare now. I run drawing sessions. I, I'm just in. You're interested in, in a lot of stuff. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Every direction. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I admire really your ability to take ideas and actually turn them into tangible <laughs> objects. Yeah. And I'm sure that there are times where, do they come out exactly as you envision, or do they take on a life of their own? They take on a life of their own a lot of times. Um, sometimes you'll start down one path and you end up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of that's the growing process. Mm -hmm. And then part of it sometimes might be like, well, I couldn't get that material, or there was this mistake. And sometimes they do end up as you visioned. <laughs> Good. I'm more of a planner. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I can say from experience, you know, this was exactly how I planned it. This one, I planned 
much more rigorously than you would think. For example, the way the battery pack's angled, yeah. that's because it won't fit this way. So you and, and I worked all that out on a computer before I started cutting. Well, I don't know about that. It's a lot of practice since going back to when I was probably 12 or 13. And I think a lot of makers stuff. have the same kind of experience. Yeah. It's not something that starts necessarily when you're in your 40s like I am, but it's something you've been doing since you started it's with Lego. It's in your DNA, I can tell. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. But we want to bring it to everybody, and, and it's absolutely doable. I mean... MakerFairABQ.com, you see the uh, URL right there on the screen. Wow, this is great stuff. We're going to play with the toys. <laughs> yeah. And uh, want to thank Wendy and Kirk for being here. Thanks, thank guys. Thank you. Hi, Mom. Yeah, hi, Mom. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, I had to. you got to get that out. Shout we'll out to the moms. <laughs> you should come. I think I will. It's and, you really know, with great. With clothing, we, have, um, we had a woman last year who not only, it's not just the sewing and say cutting and reworking, it's really upcycling clothes is the easiest way to start.